I don't really judge my, you know, game like that. Um, I'm more of a team team aspect, see what my team is doing. Just want to win. I don't, I don't care about being the best player. I want to be the best team. I always said that. Kawhi Leonard has established himself as one of the best players in the NBA right now. He is the best player in the world. He is the most like Jordan that we've seen. He's so big and strong, he's going to bump you off and still get his shot off. He's a beast. He can take it. He's a beast. He can take it's it. It's time we look at all the things that make Kawhi Leonard so good. What is up dudes, dudettes, ballers, players, it's your boy MJ. Everything that Kawhi has done in these playoffs can be summed up by this. <laughs> Kawhi's run has been amazing and now he's led the Raptors to the NBA Finals. My roommate and I were discussing the East before the season even started and we kept coming back to one man being able to carry his team into the Finals and that was Kawhi. But still, witnessing this and how he has single-handedly carried the Raptors? It's fucking incredible! It seems like it's a rinse and repeat every play with an ISO, but there's so much more going on and also so many specific things that only Kawhi can do. So let's talk about what makes Kawhi Leonard so good. Also, make your finals predictions in the comments because I'm interested to see what the community thinks. We are literally less than 1,000 away from 200k, so it's in 90% that watch my videos that still aren't subscribed. Please subscribe! Forget the regular season, this is Playoffs Kawhi, and I just felt like I've seen a lot of similarities before in another GOAT, Michael Jordan. But before we even get to that, let's talk about what Kawhi is doing offensively and how that could possibly be close to MJ. The Raptors are constantly running an ISO for Kawhi, and the reason it's so effective is because Kawhi is an effective ISO scorer. He runs a limited moveset, mostly hesitations and in between the leg dribbles similar to a 3 dribble drill where you only get 3 dribbles to score. He doesn't waste dribbles or have fancy handles, but each dribble works because Kawhi is great at reading the defender's feet. He is looking for the defender to be hopping instead of staying low and shuffling. That's where his hesitation dribble can easily transfer into a jump shot. At the exact moment a defender crosses his feet, is on his back heels, or hops, he has a smooth transfer from waist high to the apex of his shot while using the momentum of the hesitation. His release point is so high with his 7 foot 3 wingspan which makes it even more lethal. 7 foot 3. 7 foot- He's a demigod! On top of that, he looks to open the defender's front foot and blow by. The Bucks were guarding his right hand and his series of jabs and handles was all it took to open up that front foot and drop it back. Once he could do that, he could do his patented step back. Now Kawhi creates step back for his mid range with raw leg strength. Guys like CJ create amazing space with hard stops and quick change of pace which works really well but Kawhi is different. He opens that front foot by making the defender drop down to protect the drive and then create separation by stepping back with tremendous force with his front foot. This gives him all the space he needs but by no means is that easy and that's also why it looks like Kawhi is playing in slow motion because he is not just changing his pace, he is changing direction. It's similar to what Paul Pierce did with his step back and yes I mentioned the guy who's always wrong, Paul Pierce. <laughs> Kawhi keeps his balance by trying to jump straight up with his leg strength no matter from what position he's jumping from or from what angle. Was he doing he does, a drill? He does it in slow motion. See, we don't we don't have to use the slow mo camera. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Now I want to address Kawhi's play and why it looks like he's in slow motion. The step back is one thing, but even when he's in the lane, Kawhi is moving slowly through. He's finding openings similar to how Harden has his herky jerky motion, but instead of looking ways to create contact for fouls, Kawhi is looking for ways to create space through little nudges. And because Kawhi is a Finals MVP 
and has been the man in important playoff situations, the game has slowed down for him. There's nothing to really break down with that because Kawhi is going at his own pace and not the defense's pace. It's a quality the great players have. They dictate play, not the other way around. All of what I mentioned takes years of practice and hard work, and Kobe said that Kawhi came into the league with no jump shot. I mean, he was airballing. But he would always be in the gym early shooting whenever Kobe played the Spurs and Kobe took notice of that. What I'm about to talk about now is something that Kawhi hasn't done hard work for and just has and that takes his game to the next level. The thing I'm talking about is his huge hands. These hands were previously looked at as just defensive weapons that allow him to grab the ball from the defender. I mean, Ooh. damn. But Kawhi has figured out how to use his hands on the offensive side of the ball, and that is scary. For context, Kawhi Leonard's hands are the ninth biggest hands in NBA history at 9.75 inches in length and 11.25 inches in span. That's bigger than Wilt Chamberlain's. Yeah, he can finish at the rim and hold on to the ball which he has been doing for years. Yet the reason why he has been able to time those jumpers well with the defender's mistake is because he can palm the ball straight from the hesitation into the jump shot. I understand that most players can palm the ball, but Kawhi Leonard's hands engulf the ball. If the defender doesn't make a mistake, then Kawhi doesn't have to take a jump shot and let the ball fall to continue to dribble. The key thing here is that Kawhi is reacting to the defender's mistake or non-mistake. It's not like he's deciding beforehand that he's going to shoot. Instead, he looks at the defender's feet and decides what to do, whether that is to shoot or keep his handle. Another big thing that Kawhi has shown in just these playoffs is his passing with multiple defenders on him. But more importantly, it's not predetermined, and it's his hands that's allowing him to do that. So when Kawhi hits into the paint and the post, he hasn't decided whether he's going to pass or shoot, keeping the threat of a shot very real for the defense. Even when Kawhi jumps into the air, he hasn't necessarily determined the pass or shoot because he can hold on to the ball up in the air and move the ball away from the defender while bulleting a pass to the open defender. It's extreme control in the air similar to guys like Dr. J and MJ. They're monsters! It's his instincts that he has developed. He always had the capability of using his hands like this, and his hands make it nearly impossible to anticipate what he's gonna do. It's why Fred Van Fleet was able to get seven uncontested threes in game five. And without a way to anticipate what Kawhi is doing, the defense is always gonna be one step behind. A lot of what Kawhi Leonard does can't be guarded by one man, and the Bucks, time and time again, allowed the switch and left Brooke Lopez to guard Kawhi on an island. There's a better way to guard Kawhi which I might end up doing a video on in the future but I want to stress that Kawhi has developed himself into this type of player. He wasn't anything like this when he came into the league and now he's developed skills and an offensive IQ to read the defense which gets me to my next point. Kawhi gets to his spots. Now that sounds real simple but it's really not. The defense knows the scouting report and knows which spots they have to stop each player from getting to and the offensive player has to get to his spots. And time and time again, Kawhi does get to his spots. He uses a snake dribble out of a pick and roll to force his defender on the roller and to try to force a switch with the big man and then dribble out to do an iso. Kawhi doesn't really take uncomfortable shots for him. He repeatedly takes shots from his spots. Yes, he can make some tough shots, but it's a shot he wants and not what the defense wants. So after illustrating all of this, I need to make the comparison between Kawhi and Jordan. No, they are not the same players, but they have similarities. For instance, remember when I said Kawhi has the ninth biggest hands of all time? Well, Jordan has the eighth biggest hands in NBA history at 9.75 inches in length and 11.375 inches in span, meaning the same length and 0.175 inches more span than Kawhi. It's why Michael Jordan had
had great control in the air with the ball, apart from just his athleticism. It's also helped Jordan to be such a good defender like Kawhi, being able to take the ball away from the offense. But more than that, Michael Jordan and Kawhi have the same type of gravity on the floor. It was honestly crazy to see in this Bucks series and the 76ers series, but Kawhi drew the attention of five players once he was inside the three-point line, similar to MJ. Like, look at this play. There are one, two, three, four, five defenders all looking at Kawhi and converging on him. That was Jordan in his prime, but spacing wasn't the way it was now. That's why Jordan got pummeled by the Pistons. <laughs> Kawhi and Jordan are also mid-range assassins capable of getting the shot they want at any time. Similar to Kawhi, Jordan was an effective dribbler using 2-3 dribbles to get to his spot and pull up, making the defender pay for the slightest mistake in their defensive footwork. Jordan also used his huge hands to his advantage when transitioning from his dribble to his shot. And like Jordan, Kawhi passes that ball while taking advantage of his huge hands. One of the reasons why why Jordan's pump fake worked so well was because he didn't intend it to be a pump. He would start going up, but be able to hold on to the ball and use his leg strength to stay on the ground. And that's exactly what Kawhi does. Another similarity between Jordan and Kawhi is that they both crash the offensive rebounds. Kawhi and Giannis are the only two small forwards that are in the top 20 for offensive rebounding this postseason, with Kawhi averaging 2.2 offensive rebounds per game. Jordan in his prime in the 96 to 98 championships averaged 1.8 offensive rebounds per game and Magic Johnson averaged 1.7 offensive rebounds per game. This allows those guards to get in good positions to do putbacks and also with Kawhi and Jordan because they have massive hands they have an advantage in getting the ball and also getting extra possessions for their team. In Kobe's detailed show he recommended Kawhi to crash the offensive rebounds like Mike and he has. Now Jordan is more athletic, one inch shorter and played the two, not the three, is more vocal and expressive, has better footwork, but just watching Kawhi gave me Jordan vibes. And because the Raptors run all these isos, we get to see this out of Kawhi. Kawhi even plays more like a two on the offensive side of the ball. And he has been running through competition like Jordan did. Just about experience. Uh. If you want a defensive breakdown why Kawhi is so good, that's much easier because Kawhi's greatest strength is on-ball defense. He has razor-like reflexes, awesome anticipation, amazing hands, just stays low, and puts energy on that end. I could go more into detail, but I think that Kawhi can defend anyone because he can take the ball away from anyone. One thing I will say is that Kawhi is an excellent baiter. He lets the offensive player think that they have a spot to go to and then takes the ball away from them when they expose the ball to go to their attacking position. It's definitely something that is high IQ and requires a lot of good timing but Kawhi has that. His 7 foot 3 wingspan locks people up and let's be honest, Kawhi makes defense fun to watch because with him, it's an art. I'm excited to see these finals. Like I said on Twitter, I would have loved to see LeBron in this year's East against Kawhi or Giannis, but now we have a new team in the East to face the Warriors. I have loved seeing Kawhi just show how good he has become, and I want to make sure that this video showed all the hard work Kawhi has put along with his natural gifts. But what do you think? Who's winning the finals and what is Kawhi averaging? We are literally less than a thousand away from 200k, so to 90% that aren't subscribed, please subscribe! 200k giveaway coming ASAP. Drop a like for Kawhi, cause if he ain't earned this like with this play, I don't know what can. The Instagram shout of the day goes to Nick, and the all day notification shout out goes to ED Magic. Thanks for the all day support. Make sure to bell for all the notifications, and if you're not a sub, hit that subscribe button join the all day community for more fire content all day support. It's your boy MJ. We out. Spaceship, no, 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 no.